All right, so today we are sanding the master bedroom to get it ready for a stain. I'm gonna go around and bang the nails. covered in four coats of material. So there was a stain, a poly, then a paint, and another poly. So four layers total. And on the inner rim, there was two layers. So the inner rim came out uh, came up all right, but the problem is, is that whenever you sand over poly or paint, it gums up the pad. And once the pad is gummed up, it's pretty much useless. So we actually went through about 50 pads of 25 grit sandpaper. A whole two steps down from the pad I started with. I started with a 40. 40 just wasn't cutting it. So uh, what I ended up doing was going back to 80s, exchanging the 40s for 25s, and then running the room with 25s. Even after going through two whole things of 25, I'm still left with this. So as you can see, it looks better. You know, you, you can barely see the paint. There's paint still under the radiator, but we're gonna cover that up, so that's not a big deal. You can still see there's steam all around the perimeter of the room. And that's after going over with a floor sander. That's after I spent right here, this spot right here, I spent an hour laying on my belly last night trying to use a finished sander. And it's just not coming up. So I went to Home Depot this morning and got two new sanders. I got an orbital sander, which you just saw uh, over there, and I got a belt sander. My thinking is maybe because the floor is so cupped, the sander is just not able to hit those spots. So for that, I got the orbital sander. So I'm gonna try that and see if that will strip off the stain. If the stain still won't come off uh, after I hit it with the orbital sander, then we're gonna to go to the nuclear option, which is belt sanding. And so that's where it stands. So right now I'm gonna go around the edge with this orbital sander and see if it does anything to take off the uh, remaining varnish. <laughs> As much as I'd like to say that that is working, it's not. So, 
Let me go nuclear. So I got two different grits for the belt sander. I got 80 and I got 50. I do know that these things eat wood, so I'm gonna start with the 80 uh, just in case I screw up. And if I'm not getting anywhere with the 80, then I'm gonna go to the 50. I'm starting on a section of floor that's gonna be underneath a piece of furniture. So if anything happens, it's hidden. Let's try it. Let's try it. Only one way to do is try it. So the belt sander is definitely working better. It is leaving, however, uh, an area where I just can't reach around the edge of the room. So what I'm gonna try to do is, even though it's not uh, ideal, I'm gonna try to go across the grain with the belt sander once I'm done with most of the stuff on here. It took an absolute uh, lifetime to sand these floors down. Got rid of a good amount of that varnish and paint. I mean, it, it's to the point where I'm hoping that it just won't be noticeable. It's right up against the baseboard, so I think we're gonna be in the clear. Um, did not come up easy. I burned through every single belt I bought for the belt sander. So I, uh, and the belt sander was actually broken right out of the box. So it wasn't working. Uh, full seam anyway, and it was chewing belt. So I was lucky that I finished just in the nick of time before the last belt broke. I just did another 25 pass just to kind of even things out since I've been kind of using the belt sander here and there to get the paint off. Uh, and now I just switched to 60. And this is going to be a long one because I have to really try to even out this floor as much as possible on uh, this pass before we go to 100, which is going to be a kind of fine stage. So anyway, that's where we are now. Um, this is the first time I've ever had to refinish a floor, so there's a lot of kind of learning. I'll probably, when I do the other floors, I'll do more of a DIY explaining each step, but this was just kind of the experience of getting it the first time. So here we are, day three, right? Uh, we returned the floor sander uh, this morning. Uh, we sanded with 25 green, 60, and 100 on the floor sander. And now all that's left to do is take the orbital around and try to clean up some of the low spots that the floor sander missed. <laughs> performance of this overall sander. All right, new technique. I'm gonna try the multi-tool sander and see if that works better and then do a finish with the orbital. This is end of day three, and we finally got the floor uh, down to the point where we're ready to oil it. Hard to believe that just three days ago, this was a totally different room. But boy, the work definitely paid off on this one. We got it mixed the uh, oil up. We did one to one ratio tongue oil to mineral spirits. And so we have that mixed up here. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna start rolling it on in this uh, back corner here and uh, we'll see where we go. You ready? Mm 
idea tutorialist that's watched said you really don't have to be as careful with this as you do varnish or other types of stain. You really just want to kind of put it on thick initially, wipe up the excess, and uh, just keep reapplying and pretty much soak it until the wood can't take it anymore. But it's not like, um, you know, it's not like shellac or anything like that where you have to be really regimented. Yeah. It does have a smell, but it's very slight. Well, pleasant. Yeah. You know, kind of reminds me of the smell of a library. Mm -hmm. Like old books. Wow. That <laughs> did not go far at all. How much did we mix up that time? A cork. Oh god. Uh oh. Too full. Yep, that's for sure. So we've finished, what was it, three coats now? Four coats? I think we're about four coats deep. It's really coming along nicely. It's looking good. What we're looking for is that 80 to 90% of the floor should look glossy and high shine after about 40 minutes of having the oil sit on. It's at that point we're safe to go in and remove the excess. But we're about probably 10 minutes in to this round and we're gonna wait another 20 to see how much absorbs. Um, very interesting watching this stuff dry because it really does absorb a lot of the oil. And um, you know, you walk away for just a second and come back and huge swaths of the floor have just soaked up every last drop of oil you put on. And uh, that, that is the thing that has surprised me the most is just how much oil the, the wood can soak up. Very nice, right? So now uh, I'm going and I'm absorbing all the excess oil off the floor uh, before I go to bed. If you leave the oil on the floor, um, it'll create a white film. Uh, which you don't want. So I'm going over it once with this flip them up, put most of the oil, and then I'm going to come back with a rag and just kind of touch up. Smile, smile more when I see you. Smile less when I miss you. No, I don't want to be left alone. All right, so it has been five days, I guess, since we finished the job. The uh, day after Monday, we came back and we gave it a couple more coats. We ended up using a full gallon of mineral spirits and a full gallon of uh, tongue oil to finish this floor. So for a room the size, you know, 10 by 13, you can expect to use about a gallon of each uh, to, to finish it. And I gotta say, I'm really happy with it turned out. So here's what it looks like now. It has a really nice, rich uh, finish. It's a little, it has kind of a soft gloss on it. I couldn't be happier with the way uh, it turned out. I think it's perfect. Um, after we finished this one, we both looked at each other and were like, oh, we're doing all our floors like this. So um, one down, about six to go. So that's, uh, that'll be another about six weeks of work to get all those done, probably split up. But uh, today, now that this is done, I'm actually going 
back into the basement 